Are you wondering whether to use your in your organization? Many organizations are currently undertaking digital transformation to improve their business processes and better achieve their goals. This is from the Handbook of Business Process Management and Digital Transformation that's edited by Paul Graven. And one of the chapters of this handbook is on YAWL, the open source workflow management system. Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. Today, I want to make a video about the features of YAWL, the open source workflow management system. If you are in the situation that you have seen that you need a workflow management system in your organization and you're currently at the stage of choosing which one, I want to give you some arguments on whether to choose YAWL or rather another system. Of course, a disclaimer right from the start, I have been working a lot with YAWL and invested a lot of time and effort. So my view may be a little biased, but with this out of the way, let's now dig into it. The first point I want to talk about is the workflow functionality of the system. There has been the workflow patterns initiative by the turn of the century where scientists have analyzed many different workflow management systems at the time and have found which patterns are used in these systems. And these patterns are divided into three categories. The first one is control flow, the second one are the resources, and the third one are data. Let's start with the control flow perspective. The control flow perspective is about the question which tasks occur in which order in the business process. And the control flow perspective is what is normally depicted in a graphical diagram in business process management systems or workflow management systems. So this is something that has been studied a lot and there has been another approach to unifying workflow management systems, which is called BPMN. And BPMN is a notational standard for business processes. And the BPMN standard covers almost all of the workflow patterns in the control flow perspective. And consequently, many of the workflow management systems cover a lot of these features. The second perspective is the resource perspective. The resource perspective is about questions on who is going to execute which task. And the distribution of work is one of the essential tasks of a workflow management system. So, for example, you can distribute work items based on the role of the participants, or you can distribute them based on the organization, based on capabilities. You can distribute work items by a round robin strategy, or a random strategy by shortest queue. You can also respect who has done a previous task. This is called retain familiar. You can also have a four eyes principle and many, many things. And what I found out so far is that many other business process management systems don't really cover a lot of the resource perspective of workflow management systems. So you have a coverage sometimes which is below 20%. And here YAWL really excels. And you should really look at the features of YAWL and look at everything that's implemented there and compare it to other systems before you take a decision of choosing this or the other workflow management system. The third perspective is the data perspective. So data are very important too. Data and data types are the basis for creating forms for workflow management systems, the forms that users use to input information and to read information, of course. And YAWL handles data in the editor on a simple level with just dragging and dropping things and some primitive data types. If you want to define more complex data types, you can use XML schema definition in YAWL. And XML schema definition is a standard and there are many libraries existing for XML schema and also for XML. And that's why when you want to integrate a YAWL workflow management system 
into some other architecture or you want to build a persistence layer, you can use existing libraries. So for example, you can use HyperJaxB, which is an object relational mapper to automatically create a relational database for the objects of your workflows. And then you can store these objects from the workflow or retrieve objects from the database without having to write SQL code. Another important feature of YAWL is flexibility. Flexibility is a feature that you already have when you have an editor, when you can change the order of tasks, for example, by just clicking with the mouse and dragging task around. But there is an additional level of flexibility implemented into YAWL that allows you to extend a workflow definition by additional cases as you move along. And this can even be done with existing cases. And so you can have exception handling, additional features and so on while a case is running. And so the system can learn and with time can get more and more complex cases. And this allows you to specify, let's say 80% of the functionality that you need in the first place. And then while the system is running, you can add the remaining 20%. Yeah, One of the fathers of YAWL uh, is Will van der Aalst, who is also known as the godfather of process things. mining. And therefore, it is no wonder that YAWL is very closely connected to the topic of process mining. YAWL has an interface and in YAWL you can just go to the specification and say download log and this will download the event log for the specification that you have selected in the XES format. And the XES format can then be imported into most process mining tools like PROM, like Celonis, Disco and many other tools. Let's now talk about the technical features of YAWL. One thing is that it's very easy to deploy. So YAWL runs under the ordinary operating systems like Linux, Mac and Windows. And you can also install the YAWL server on a Mac-based, Linux-based or Windows-based server. The additional components that you need to define the workflows are the YAWL editor, which also runs in all these platforms. When you install YAWL, YAWL will be automatically put into a Tomcat server. It's bundled with a Tomcat server. And you can also choose other servers if you prefer to do so. If you want to connect it to database management systems, you can use Postgres, MySQL, Oracle database, Microsoft database. Many different relational databases can be directly connected to YAWL. Extensibility is another topic. If you want to, to extend the YAWL system, for example, if the user interface is not sufficient for your requirements because you have some special features. In one project, uh, for example, we had the requirement that we need to input data into the system with a map. So there, there were polygons and circles and things like that, and they had to be input. So if you have a, an interface, if you have an interface requirement like that, you can create your own interface and adapt it to the YAWL system. And because of its service-oriented architecture, this is very easy to do. Dynamic forms is also a feature. Dynamic forms are created for YAWL workflows. And these forms are created from the variables and from the data types of the variables that you specify in the editor, and also from your more complex data types that you can define using XSD. And so each time you change something in the data types or in the variables, the forms are regenerated and will be up to date all of the time. There's also the possibility to use custom forms if you have more specific requirements for your forms. But then the disadvantage is that you have to adapt the forms each time you change the variables or the data types of your workflow specification. Integration into other IT systems. This is an important topic. And in YAWL, you can do this by using so-called codelets. Codelets are Java classes that allow you to program anything that you can program in Java, and then you can access other systems. You can call web services, for example, or uh, access ERP systems, whatever you like to do. 
In YAWL, there is not a lot of functionality already there. So in this case, what you need to do is really, you have to develop these components, but you can do this in a very general way. And so you can reuse codelets in many tasks. Another possibility of integrating your workflows with other IT systems is, of course, robotic process automation. We have built some prototypes in this domain where we have created a robot that accesses a YAWL workflow just in the same way that an ordinary user would do that. And so the robot picks work items, then goes to work on the work items, accesses other systems, gets the inf information from there and puts it back into the workflow. This is very easy to do and this allows you to rapidly create integration with other systems. Another important topic is identity management. In YAWL you have roles, you have users, passwords, privileges, many things that you want to store about a user of the workflow. And this can of course be done solely in YAWL. So when you are creating prototypes, you would start doing that directly in YAWL. But when you go to a productive system and you have YAWL integrated into your IT organization, then you wouldn't want to have new users, new passwords for YAWL. Fortunately, there are already some plugins in YAWL where you can pull the organizational information from an LDAP server or from an Active Directory server. So instead of declaring everything in YAWL, you just pull it from the general server where you store the information in your organization. And this doesn't have to be programmed, it just has to be configured. Last but not least, let's talk about the license. YAWL is of course open source, it's free to use, and the license is a GNU Lesser General Public License version 3. So if you do extensions to YAWL, it's always a good idea to contribute them back to the community because they will eventually be part of the general YAWL distribution and then you don't have to load your own extensions each time. You can just pull them from the general distribution and everyone else will profit from these extensions. Of course, if you build components based on your like your own user interface, you don't have to contribute them back to the community. Talking about the user community, uh, it's very hard to say how many people there are in reality. Um, YAWL has been downloaded more than 250,000 times. It's very hard to say how many people are active using YAWL. There is a little feedback here on, uh, on this YAWL user group channel. We can see how many subscribers there are, how many people are reading, uh, are viewing uh, the videos, etc. But it's very hard to say because there's always a lot of people who are just downloading the system, using the system and may never report back to us. So that's a quick overview over the YAWL functionality. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Just write something in the comments and then your comments will be answered definitely. See you soon.